I'm Frank Cooper. I'm Chief Marketing Officer of BlackRock. Okay, share your top three takeaways from your talk. So, so my talk really was about the idea of connecting wealth to well-being. Uh, I believe that we've artificially uh, separated those two concepts. And, and, the, and the top three takeaways for me are number one, just the idea of, of utilizing wealth and well-being as a concept and analogizing that to health and the fitness movement. I think we can learn a lot from what happened in the fitness movement in 1960s to think about how you can make wealth and well-being connected again. The other, the other uh, part of it is, is the idea of empathy. I think that um, in order for us to really connect with a wider range of people so that more and more people have access to what we call wealth, that we need to step up the way in which we actually connect to people, the way we intuit how they think, feel, and act, putting ourselves uh, in their shoes. We do it today mostly through sales with a small group of people, but I believe we can leverage technology to actually expand empathy and understand uh, people better. And then the, the third takeaway for me is, is that this is not a concept that's for one company. I think we need to do this as an industry. As an industry, we need to think about reclaiming that connection between wealth and, and well-being. Um, you know, we talk about financial well-being often, but I believe that is not the goal. I believe the goal is well-being in and of itself. That is the, the higher aspiration that people have. And so they see health feeding into that. They see nutrition feeding into that. They see physical exercise feeding into that. And I believe that money or wealth should also feed into that. You've had an incredible marketing career across consumer goods, music, content creation, and more. Why did you decide to take on marketing in a highly regulated world of financial services? That's a loaded question. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't think about the constraints so much that it's a highly regulated world of financial services. I think about where is there an opportunity to actually add value to people's lives, to expand human potential. And I saw music in that way. Um, when I was at Motown and Def Jam, both of which really took culture and, and took it into the mainstream. And I think it actually helped people understand who they are as individuals, but also who, who we are collectively. Um, I saw the same thing at BuzzFeed, where BuzzFeed expanded empathy and, and took people who were historically marginalized and put them on, on the center stage. I look at financial services, I think we're at a moment in time where financial services can be used not only for the elite few, that many more people can access uh, financial services. They can become much more knowledgeable about finances. They can, can develop a way of thinking, a set of behaviors, so that they can become more financially stable. And so I think as we, we leverage technology and as we kind of use different tools to think about how people can, can access wealth and, and, and use it in a way that is, it's accessible to a wider group of people, that's what motivates me and that's what excites me. And I've done that across uh, multiple industries and I see the same in financial services. In 2018, money is becoming more digital. Where does the human fit into this e equation? You know, I, I spent a lot of time in, in the digital space and um, I've served on, on, on VC-backed company boards um, for augmented reality companies. I, I've worked across uh, you know, BuzzFeed and AOL. Um, I don't ever think that it's digital only. I think that is a, a, a kind of false dichotomy that it's digital versus human. What I'm excited about is that kind of hybrid intelligence and hybrid interaction and, and new possibilities that come from connecting humans with computers and humans with machines. It's an extraordinary opportunity, I, I believe, because ironically, machines can be used to mitigate human bias. But the human touch is always necessary because the questions we ask, the world that we want, the ethical dimensions, that's still gonna play a role uh, in, in, in the world that we want to live in, the world that we want to create. And so I don't see it as this bifurcation between humans and machines. I think it's a combination of the two together. And that's the real power that we can unleash. How is BlackRock changing the future of wealth management? Um, that's, a, that's a difficult question. Look, I think what we try to do is serve our clients as fiduciaries. We try to make sure that we put our clients first. We wake up every single day, all 14,000 employees, and we think first and foremost about how do we serve clients. And when you look at that, and you look at the, the world we live in today, whether it's a world of volatility or, or, wh or whether it's a world of, kind of index funds that give people more access, we're constantly looking at new ways to expand opportunity for clients. And, and so the future of wealth management, I believe, is twofold. One, digital and technology will be the new center of gravity. 
I think it's inevitable. You know, we have over 5 billion mobile subscribers worldwide, and they're touching their phones over 200 times a day. It's even more with, with millennials. Um, that has to be the center of gravity for the activity. And so I think the future of wealth management means if that's the world, if mobile and digital becomes the center of gravity, you need to speak that language. That language is usually short form. It's usually highly visual. It's usually much more intuitive and it requires you to, to ask for the participation of people on the other end. And so I think the future is one where digital is the center of gravity, we allow for participation, we deliver in short form, we deliver it visually. And I think that opens up new possibilities, not only for financial services firms, but for many more people to participate in wealth management. Why do you think an event like tw Money 2020 is valuable for the financial services ecosystem? You know, what I, what I love about Money 2020 is that it thinks about financial services as an ecosystem. And so it's bringing together the full range of people. You, you see um, investors, you see uh, fintech companies, you see marketers, and we're all coming together and, and we're coming together to have a conversation. Um, this is not a conference where people are just speaking at you and you passively listen as an audience. There's time built in for people to, to interact with each other and to learn from each other and to start conversations that continue even after the conference. And I think that's an awesome thing.